<clears throat> hey, Kai and Inessa, good morning. Good morning, Malta and Aslan. Hello, Timothy Peduso, Stella and Matthias. Hello, Ayala, Lauren and Alessandra. Hello, Clara, Hannah, and Felix. Hello, Cassidy. Hello, Avram. <clears throat> Hello, Isaiah. Hello, Sophie. Hello, Zach. Hello, Devante. Good big crowd today. I like it. <clears throat> Hello, Amelie. Hello, Isaac. Hello, Isabella. Hello, Michael. Hello, Linus. And Isaiah, I got you. Thank you. Hello, Ingrid. Hello, Julius. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Hello, Aaron. <clears throat> Hello, Alicia. Super. Good. <clears throat> Thanks, all of you, for joining me. <clears throat> what we're going to do this morning is do kind of a little lab demonstration together. I got it more or less set up over on the other side of the room. And um, yeah, we're gonna define some terms. And if I can, I'll have you do something similar in the lab next week, the A team if we're in school, and then the B team the following week, okay? So that's the scoop. So as you could guess, we're gonna deal with lenses. And remember, we had two types. We had this type, for example, and I'm going to show that and see if you can find the word. What type of lens was that? Could you find from yesterday the word and type it in? If you can see it, I'll try and hold it where you can see it as best as you can. What sort of lens was that one? Super. Got a couple answers already. It is indeed a diverging lens. Good. All right, and yeah, the shape is concave, although we do call it a diverging lens, right? Aaron and Isaiah got that as well. Good. Now, the other one is a converging lens. It's a pretty skinny one, but it's a converging lens. What shape is that for fun? Okay, what's the math word? It's converging lens, and what shape is that one? I know I'm a little behind because your responses take a while to get to me. <laughs> but everyone who said done, diverging is right. Thank you. Okay, con convex. Good. Isabella, Inessa, and Aaron. Super. Yeah, so it's a convex shape, and it's a converging lens. Super. Okay, good. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to put that aside because I got everybody checked in here. <clears throat> Let's draw something simple so you have an idea, one idea of what lenses are used for. Here's an old fashioned idea. You'll see, ah, I got another person there. I got Liam. I don't know if I checked you in. Thank you, Liam. Okie dokie. Alessia is here as well. Good, Alessia. Thank you. Gotcha. And Tim Hartling is here. Good, Tim. Dynamite, dynamite. Anybody else say hi if you haven't checked in? I got most of you still looking for Charlotte, I think. Still looking for Allie and Corey. And 
in 9E. Still looking for Ethan. And Anton. And that might be about it. And maybe Corsine. I don't know if I saw Corsine yet. Okay, gotcha. Thank you, Liam. Yep. Okay, so um, let's see, focus in so you can see this, this whiteboard. So one use of camera, uh, one, one use of lenses is in an old-fashioned camera. I know we don't use these today, but I'm showing it to you for a reason. So bear with me, okay? So what was an old-fashioned camera like? Let's just find out. Okay. Well, what they had in them was a converging lens. So I'm going to draw that. And back here, they had this old fashioned stuff called film. We don't have that anymore. And here's the film. It was on a roll back here. And of course, the trick was to get the picture, the picture uh, on the on the film. You wanted it to get focused on the film. So the reason I'm I'm telling you this is, yeah, modern cameras are a bit different because they're so digital. So there are lenses on them, but they operate a bit differently. Um, I can have a very flat camera. I don't have to have this distance that I did in the old camera. Like, ah, and there's Charlotte. Thank you, Charlotte. Good. Like, Liam, in the old cameras, I needed to have this distance because physically, maybe you guys can guess what this is. If I got, if I'm taking like a picture of a tree, here's my tree. Not the best tree in the world, but there you go. Thank goodness I wasn't hired as an art teacher, right? So if I take a picture of this tree, I'm going to have some parallel lines, aren't I, coming from this? Remember we drew this yesterday? Now I'm going to tell you what the tree is in terms of optics. Okay, so label the tree object. So that's what physics calls our object. And essentially the object is really far away, okay? A tree is probably not real close. And what happens is the rays come in, like we talked about yesterday, and refract. Remember that word from yesterday? So they bend, and they're essentially going to land right back here on the film. And I'm going to get an image here. Here's something interesting. When I have the film image, when I have the uh, film image on the, uh, uh, sorry, when I have the image, uh, you don't know that word yet. When I get the picture of the tree on the film, it's upside down. That's what happens when light goes through here. So the tree is looking like this. So the branches are like this. And there's the little bottom of the tree like that. So the, the picture is upside down. And that's okay, because on the film, it doesn't really matter. You get it developed and you get your picture, right, of the tree. Well, this picture in physics, it's called the image. So obviously, we want to get a sharp image. And at least for this picture, if I'm coming from really far away, So if the object is really far, and we're going to call that infinity. You guys know the symbol for infinity? It's kind of a cool-looking symbol. So infinitely far away, and I mean compared to the size of the camera. It's pretty far away. So if the object is really far, the image is 
is at something we had yesterday that starts with F. Exactly, no, no film, right? Um, <clears throat> the image is at the focal point. In other words, and I know my picture's getting kind of busy here, all right? From here to here, from the middle of the lens out to where my image sits, that's the F. And remember, F we had yesterday is the length to the focal point. So it's called the focal length. Now, that's only true if the object is at infinity right? Infinity, really, really far away. Then the image is at the focal point. Okay. All right. Before we do our, <clears throat> see, and Inessa knew that, so did Alessandra, Ingrid, and Zach. Thank you for participating. Well done. <clears throat> you need some words before we do our little lab at over here in the corner, okay? And some symbols. So I got to introduce you to some symbols for some of this stuff. Uh, I'd like to do it here, but I also need more room. So I'm going to have to erase this now <coughs> and, uh, yeah, give you the symbols. And then we're going to use them right over there. All right. We're going to take you on a little journey, you and the laptop. Here we go. <clears throat> Let's call this optics vocab, okay, and symbols. Optics, the study of light and lenses, and some symbols. Okay, so the first one we talked about is, uh, I know this is review, but it's the focal length. Focal length. And it is a length, like usually in meters or centimeters, okay? I'll write here centimeters or meters. And the symbol is small f. I make it like a little curvy f, okay? Then the other one, and I capitalize it to emphasize that the letters capitalized, is the focal length. We had that yesterday. Yes, I know this is review. Don't worry, we're getting to some new stuff too. So the focal length, also in centimeters or meters. No, sorry. Ah, ah, bad teacher. Okay. No, sorry. Don't get don't get too far there. Okay, sorry. It's the focal point. And of course, it's not measured in centimeters or meters because it's just a it's just a dot. And for that point, we use capital F. Now, I want to show you something before you go on. Okay, so <clears throat> Not all, but a lot of lenses we use are like this. We say it's symmetric. So here's the deal. I can get this lens and I can hold it like we did yesterday and I can get a clear image from the window. And that's hard for you to see, but it's about right here. That's maybe 10, 15 centimeters. And that's my focal length. And so my focal point is now on the whiteboard. So the focal point is here. Here I'm holding the lens. I know that's hard for you to see. I'll try and do better when we do our little project. What if I turn this around? If it's symmetric, check it out. And now I do, oh, look at that. It's the same distance. So my point is I've got two focal points if the lens is symmetric, either if it's a diverging or converging. If it's symmetric, and I'm going to write that in parentheses afterwards. So if symmetric, there's two focal points. I'm going to abbreviate that, folk points. Okay? Does that make sense? 
So it's like if I hold it like this, one of the points is out here, a focal out the, the focal length of about 15 centimeters for me, and one of them's on this side. Why? Because I can have the light come through either side because it's very symmetric as a lens. Not all lenses are symmetric. Like if you have eyeglasses, they're usually not symmetric like that. I can't turn them around, okay? But this one is very symmetric. Ute, let's see. Any questions before we go on? Yep, yep. Are the two focal points connected? Uh, there's nothing in connecting them in the air, Alessia, but we often connect them with something on paper, and I'll show you how to do that when we do it on paper, okay? Good question. Let's continue. Another thing that we used, uh, remember the tree? That was my object. So in physics, I have an object. And there's no real symbol for that. But what I do have that needs a symbol is the distance to the object. Distance to object. And that's this. It's D with a little subscript O. Okay. And that's in centimeters or meters. Now, I got to put a little disclaimer. You might say distance to the object from where? Okay, from the middle of the lens. That's important, especially if you do a lab with me next week. So the distance to the object from middle of lens. And by the way, be sure and bring your notes next week, of course, right, to class from middle of lens. All right, so that's D-O. We're going to do all this, and I'm going to draw a picture of it, okay? Um, my object that we're going to use is going to be a flame from a candle. That's going to be – the object won't be the candle. It'll be the flame. You'll see how that's going to work in just a minute. And if you do a lab with me next week, you're going to do the same thing and have a little candle. What a brighter world it will be. Okay, so here we go. The last thing. Um, how are we doing? We're doing okay. The last thing is the distance to the image. Well, okay, we got the word image. I should write that first. And I don't have a symbol for image, but I do have distance to image. We're going to use these symbols a lot, so that's why I'm giving them to you. We're going to use them in formulas, and we're going to use them in diagrams, like one I talked about, too, with Alessia just a moment ago. So that's why we need these symbols, okay? Uh, distance to image. And it's going to be DI. What a big surprise, right? DI, and it's also in, you guessed it, Chester, centimeters and or meters. Because it's a distance, right? Duh. So we got di, we got do, and we got small f are our three distances. Good. Ah, Cena's here. Good morning, Cena. Let me check you in. Shaboom, shaboom. Okay. Let's see if I got any questions <clears throat> before we uh, before we do our little experiment. Okay. Let me read back. Symmetric is just like Alessia, like you and I. If I hold up a hand, that is not symmetric, okay? If I hold up a marker, well, not a marker. Uh, what do I have that's symmetric? If I hold up this part of the pen, that's symmetric, okay? If I put a line down the middle of it like this, I could cut it right in two. You and I are pretty much symmetric, right? Bilateral symmetry is what biologists say. You can put a line through the middle of us, right through our nose, right? That's what I mean by symmetric. This lens is symmetric. I can hold it either way, like that or like that, and it doesn't look any different. That's what I mean, unless you by symmetry in this case. Exactly, Aaron. That's a, that's a good answer, too. And both sides curve the same way. True. Can the focal points and the distances change? If yes, then what do they? The focal point, once you make the lens, it's a good question, too. Everybody, once I make a lens, the focal length 
is stuck, okay? Because it's made of glass. I can't change that. Or can I? I cannot change a glass lens, but there are certain lenses I can change, but we'll talk about that in a couple of weeks. So that'll be kind of fun. But most lenses, no. To be honest, you're really stuck with the focal length. So if I got this lens, it's 15 centimeters on either side to the focal point, and I can't change that. Whatever it is for this diverging lens, I can't change that. It's glass. I'm stuck with it. All right? <clears throat> okay. All right, then. We're about ready to go. Let's talk about our demo. Here's going to be our candle. I'll make the flame red for grins. Because that's really our object. That's supposed to be this, by the way. Not bad for my art. So that's my object, the flame at least. Object. Then somewhere out here, we're going to have a distance to the lens. I'm going to use a diverge, a diverging, a converging lens for this. Okay, so I'm going to draw it like this. Actually, I'm going to show you my lens. Hold on, stand by or sit by. <clears throat> Here's my lens. <clears throat> it's mounted in a plastic container just to make it easier, but it's a converging lens. And uh, I'll tell you the focal length later on it, okay? At any rate, it's a, it's a converging lens, so it's convex. I always gotta think about that. Okay, there's my lens. So I'm gonna put that in the middle. Lens. Eh, let's just draw it like a lens, shall we? I don't care about the holder. So, all right, all right, okay. And we're going to put it on a little container just so it stands on something as well. Okay, um, then what we're going to have is uh, a screen, and the screen is. Uh, Let's put it over here. Like that. Okay. <clears throat> All right, ready? Let's do it. I may have to turn the lights off so nobody gets scared. All right. Okay, here we go. Got my lens. Got my got my candle, my object. And I got my laptop filled with two glasses. God, you guys are heavy. Gee, many Christmas. I should have done this with one class. Just kidding. Okay, you ready? Here we go. Here's my uh, here's my my screen. Okay. There's my ruler. And there's a match. So we're gonna light up our light up our our uh, light up our candle. And you can't see it, so we're going to change this thing a bit. Okay, hold on. We get this box out of the way. I want you to have as good a view as that you can. All right, so you see the flame. Good. And I'm going to put the, the, the lens. Okay, I'm going to put it on this little container just so it shows up pretty good. And, and I don't know if you can see this or not. I'm going to lift you up. Look back behind. Look at that. Hey, I got an image. And I'm going to move it. Oh, look at that. Now it's not in focus. See how it's kind of fuzzy? 
and now it's in focus and now it's not in focus again. Well, you can guess what I want to do, right? I want to get it in focus. So you kind of help me do that. And uh, oh, that's pretty good. Well, it's somewhere in there. I got to pick a spot, don't I? It's not so easy. I'm going to say it's right there. That's pretty in focus. Now we're going to do some measuring. Okay, you got a pen or pencil? You need to write this because I can't do it. Okay, so I need to you to measure a D O and a D I. Okay, ready? So write these down. I'm going to do this in centimeters. Okay, I'm going from the middle of the flame to the middle of the lens. So I'm going to give you that. Ooh, I should have brought my glasses, but that's actually not bad. Okay, so I got. It's exactly 15 centimeters. How about that? So 15 centimeters, please. Could you write that down? And now I'm going to and do the, 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 the distance from the middle of the lens to the, to the screen, okay? Because that's where my image is landing. I'll hold it like that. Kind of like that. And I got, whoa. I got 20. 20, 28.5. Could you write that down for the distance to the image? DI is 28.5. Okay. I'm going to move this and I want you to write down the next set of values. Okay. You guys doing this? Because I can't, I can't do it. So write these down. Okay. So you got the first two. What was it? 28.5 and the DO was 15.0. Okay. I'm going to move this a bit. Um, that's really what I'm going to do it. Maybe I'll do it this way. I'm going to move it a little towards you. So now I got this thing, and it's the new the new D O distance to the object. Again, it's from the middle of the flame to the middle of the lens. Is now twenty one. Well, 21.0. So right on the money. And now I've got to do this. You ready? Here we go. I'm going to hold you up so you can see. Hold on tight. Okay, so here we go. Uh, 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 eh, uh, okay, trying to get it in focus. Oh, now it's blurry again. I want it to be as clear as I can get. So it looks like I'm getting it right about there. Right about there, right? That's pretty good right there. Okay. We still doing okay time wise? We are. Good. All right. You ready to write some other numbers? Okay. So, for what do we have? We had 21.0, right, for the DO. Let's do the BI. So, that's now. Eighteen point two. So DI is 18.2 centimeters. So what's my point in doing this? Well, you guys are going to do this in the lab next week uh, if, you're, if you're there. And my point is that now you know when I move DO, when I move the object, right? Here's my, my candle. When I move that, the distance to the image to get it nice and focused and sharp changes. That's why on old cameras, you got to focus it. You got to move the camera a bit. What that actually used to do is move where the film was. Uh, nowadays, it's automatic focus on your on your handies and everything. OK, so the cameras you got focus automatically. But in the old days, you had to do it and you had to physically move something to focus it on something. OK, occasionally I have this with a teacher, right? You ever have a, a class and they're, they're trying to focus something on the board up front or the screen up front? Sometimes they got to fuss with it a little bit. They got to turn it a little bit and they're focusing it to get the, the either the lens moving or the screen moving one or the other. Usually it's the lens if it's a teacher doing it to get it so it's focused at the right spot up front for you. OK, with an overhead or sometimes with the uh, the. The projection up on the ceiling, okay? Those got lenses too. 
Okay, that's it for our little demo. And we're going to go and draw some stuff. But I hope you could see it pretty well. Let me see if you got any comments uh, before anything. Probably you do, and I just didn't see it. Yeah, well, I've got a bunch of stuff. Okay, I better read this before I blow out the candle, huh? Okay, so focal point, focal point. Oh, man. I, yeah. Oh, the focal length. Ah, the focal point length. The, the focal length. I forgot to tell you that. Thanks, you guys. So the third thing you need, <laughs> very good, is the focal length. And it's on here. You ready? And we're going to take the reading that's on here. I don't know if you can read that or not. You see it on there? It's what? It's 100 millimeters. But that let's do that. 100 millimeters would be how many centimeters? 100 millimeters would be how many centimeters? And this would be your small f. What would that be? 100 millimeters. Hmm? Mm, don't don't know. Okay, I'm looking at a two component. Oh man! Ah, there we go. 10 centimeters, right? Okay, so my f, my small f, is 10 centimeters. Okay. All right. And, and, you know, that was the same, right, for both measurements. I can't change the lens, so F is always 10 centimeters for this lens, okay? Okay, I'm going to bring you over, and if I, if I didn't answer your question, ask me again, because I can't read them all now. Some of your questions are gone, so you'll have to type it in again. My apologies, but thanks, everybody. 10 centimeters is right. Let's come back over. Hold on. Blow out the lights. The party's over. Okay, we'll leave our setup for a little bit. But you're going to do something similar next week. And now we're going to draw some stuff. Whoa. Okay. Whew. Didn't know if that would work or not. Ah, Corey is here. Thank you, Corey. I'll check in. Thank you, sir. Corey. K-Mac. Thank you very much. Okay. What was the second DO distance? Uh, who can answer Aaron? Because I don't, I didn't write it down. But we're going to write it down now. Okay, demo data. We had three things, didn't we? We had DO, we had DI, we had F. And these we can write centimeters because they're all in centimeters. Centimeters. Whoop. And you know that in science, right? If I put it at the top of the chart, I don't have to write it every single time. Well, we only had two trials. Okay, so we had what? We had 10 centimeters, you guys said. So 10.0 and 10.0. Good. For the for trial number one. Okay, I'm going to write, okay, so Aaron asked, what was the second DO distance? 21 centimeters. So I'm going to put that here, 21 centimeters. And can you guys help me with the other values? What was the first DO and DI, please? Okay, Alessandra has it, 15 and 28.5, thank you. These are right on the money, so I'm going to put 15.0 and then 28.5. And then my second DI was what, folks? Was my second DI 21? And what was the uh, what was the DI for the second one? I just don't remember. Ah, thank you. I got it from uh, Tim Hardling. Thanks, Tim. 18.2. <clears throat> so clearly, <clears throat> well, two things I want you to thanks everybody who said 18.2. Appreciate it, everybody. Ingrid, Isabella, Liam, Stella. Uh, Kai, Alessandra, and of course, Tim. So clearly, 
uh, F stays the same because it's the same lens, right? But as D O changes, D I must change. Because I had to move the screen to get it in focus, didn't I? Make sure you guys can see that. It's getting a little faint. Let me read that off again. So I said, clearly, put a little dash here. Clearly, F stays the same. But as DO changes, DI, the distance to the image, must change. And you know what? I realized I forgot to show you something. Okay, hold on. Okay, can you come back for one more time? All right, come with me. I won't hurt you. Okay, here we go. Okay, back to, I lit up the candle again, and I set the screen at a spot where it's focused in. You know what, I'm gonna turn off the light. Hold on, see this for Okay. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, now you can see the candle a little better, right? Oh, it's really bright. Okay, so there's the candle. But check out the image. Okay, so you see it? I'm pointing to it there. Okay, now, what do you notice about the image? Type in. What do you notice about the image compared to the original flame? So I, I don't know if you'll be able to see it or not on this uh, this uh, internet here. But if you, if you can see something, let me know. What do you notice about the image compared to the original flame? There it is. There it is. Let's see if somebody writes. Yeah, it's upside down. Good. So you can see it. Yeah, everybody see that? It's upside down. Good. We're gonna we're gonna learn the word for that in just a moment. Dynamite. Good. Okay, now now I've showed you everything I need to. <laughs> okay. Okay, lights back on for a sec. What let me blow up my candle. Hold on. Okay, I'm back. Okay. <laughs> Whoa, it's very blurry. Okay, but you could see maybe, uh, you could see, Liam, that it was upside down, huh? Okay. Um, all the light to make it actually is refracted because it went through the, through the, the, the lens. Now, I got a great word from Isabella. Isabella, it's wonderful. She knows the science word for this. Okay, so our image was upside down. But that's not what we call it in physics. So what we got to do is you and I got to talk about some vocabulary Woo, we still got five minutes. Let's do, because I want to assign a simulation. All right, a simulation at home for you to try. So here's some more vocab we need. Okay. So vocab, vocabulary, and the word for upside down from um, Isabella is inverted. So we could say our, our, our image was inverted. That's the fancy word for upside down. Just for grins, Isabella, do you know what it is when it's right side up? See if she knows for fun anyway. Well, the name for when it's right side up if she doesn't, it's no big deal. I'm impressed she knew the upside down one. So upside down is inverted. Right side up is, and I know it may be a while, Isabella, before your response gets to me, but let's just see if you know it. Somebody else might be Googling it too. 
which is fine. Okay, it's it's upright. So if it's upright, it's right side up. If it's inverted, it's upside down. Some other words you need. If the image is real, a real image, That's okay. That's okay, Isabel. Uh, <laughs> uninverted. I like that, Zach. <laughs> Creator. Okay, a real image is one that can be focused on a screen. And that's what we had today. Can be focused onto a screen. Example in demo. So you and I had a real image. Turns out, if I use a diverging lens, I don't get it to focus on a screen. I can still see the image. It's still there, but I can't focus it on a screen. So it doesn't mean it's imaginary. It just means I can't get it on a screen. And that's called uh, virtual, just like in the computer world. A virtual image can't be focused on a screen. Can't be focused onto a screen. Can I just put little dashes for the same words? So this one can't be, okay? Whoa, okay, two last words. Are we gonna fit them in? Yes, we are, I love it. Okay, so two last vocab words. Sometimes the little flame is bigger. And we say if it's bigger, the image is magnified. So magnified, and that'll be what a telescope does. If you and I make a telescope, we'll see if we have time for that. Magnified. A magnified image is larger than, big surprise, than the object. In other words, the flame would look larger. Um, I didn't really do that so much with you today, but we'll get that if you're in the lab, you'll see that. And you might see it on the simulation I send you. So magnified image is larger than the object. And then the other word sounds very British, diminished. If it is a diminished image, diminished, that's the word I want. So that's the last of the vocabulary we need for today. Uh, diminished image is, you guessed it, it's smaller than the object. And our board is full, and maybe our brains are full too. Okay, let me see if we got other things we needed. Is that how big camera uh, lenses work? In old fashioned cameras, yes, Liam, that's how they work. And magnifying glass, Gine, actually, magnifying glasses use this sort of uh, lens, to be honest. They used a. Um, um, a diverging lens, Alessia. I don't know if we'll get to that this class or not. Yeah, think of like, a, Liam, think of like a movie theater and you can imagine in the old days when they projected the image, they had to get it magnified, right? And that's a magnified image that you see on a screen at a movie theater, right? If they actually had film or at least they have whatever they're projecting it through, they have to have a, some kind of lens to magnify it and show it up on the big screen, unless it's some digital screen, in which case it's done differently, <laughs> okay? All right, which may well be the case in some movie theaters today, if we could go to a movie theater sometime. Okay, um, um, ba -ba 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 -ba. will the opposite of the magnifying be diminished? Yeah, exactly, yeah, so magnified, these are opposites, these are opposites, and these are, so they come in little pairs, Alessia, don't they? 
So check this out. I can have a inverted or upright. I can have real or virtual, and I can have magnified or diminished, or I could have the same, like same size, but that's kind of boring. You know that. Good. Wow, that's perfect timing. So thanks, everybody. I got to get to school now and drive like crazy to get there to teach my next class. So I hope to see you guys next week. I'm going to send you a little something to do, a, uh, a simulation on the Internet, which I think you'll find cool. Thanks, everybody, for participating, especially in my goofy candle thing. All right. Have a good day. We'll see you soon. Bye bye.